The Rock and Roll Coffee Show is brought to you by Writers and Rockers Coffee Company, keeping the music and memories alive with some damn good coffee. Visit them at writersandrockerscoffee.com. And Retroactive, located at Broadway at the Beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. 70s, 80s, 90s retro. Shopretroactive.com. It's the Rock and Roll Coffee Show. Yeah, we do. All right, welcome to the Rock and Roll and Coffee Show. I am Joe Sibilia. Tonight, I have two guests for you, Rob Hammersmith and Eric Gromwell from the band Skid Row. Skid Row's new record is out now. The gang is all here. I have it right here. Beautiful album. Comes in uh, the splatter vinyl, which I would recommend you pick up a vinyl, white, red, black, and splatter. I got the splatter. Pick it up now. It is available. I talked to Eric and Rob about this album and a lot more. I hope you enjoy this conversation. I had a great time talking to these guys. I think you enjoy listening. Thank um, you so much. So you guys have a new record coming out. Um, actually, by the time this comes out, it's going to be out. So that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, so your new record, October Gangs 14th. All Here, comes out October 14th, right? How exciting right. is this? Especially for you, Eric. <laughs> I mean. I what? know. It's, it's so, I, I was thinking about it like just just a couple of hours ago i was i was like wait so i joined this band in march and we played i actually counted we've played four to six shows since march uh we recorded a music video we recorded the album we started writing new songs we recorded uh well two music videos actually it's just you know it's been happening so fast and and it's just it blows my mind uh, when I when I realized that we're releasing the album now, like I I, it, I I don't know, Rob. It's just it's. I know you guys have been working on it for for a longer time than I have. But for <laughs> me, it took like a month from from I got I got the songs, I recorded the vocals, and that was like just a a month of work for me. But it took a little bit longer for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it, so Eric and I were just discussing this. Was it a couple of days ago that you and I were were chatting about this? Uh, yeah. And my earliest memory of of demos for this record goes back to January of 2019. So that'll wow. kind of put things in perspective. So Eric and I are both incredibly excited, but I think for completely opposite reasons. <laughs> uh, for so many reasons, as a band, the album, it took much longer than we expected. Uh, some reasons, looking back on it, probably within our control, uh, but certainly many of them were not. Uh, you're mm -hmm. talking about about a couple of years of a, of a pandemic, which obviously nobody planned for or knew how to how to navigate any of that. We were all just everybody in every line of work and in every industry. We were all just trying to figure it out as we went. Uh, so that obviously set us back uh, and just multiple, multiple reasons why, why as a band, it took longer than we wanted to. But honestly, yeah. I think everything does. I think, I think you, can, you can plan things and you can schedule things. And at the end of the day, really all that's good for is to figure out how far off schedule you are. Uh, that's kind of my, <laughs> my, my right. assessment of that. Uh, so again, to go back to the, to the original question, I think, uh, I speak for everybody. The band and Eric are incredibly excited, but for for different reasons, there was a different path that led everybody here. Uh, mm -hmm. That said, we're at about we're less than forty eight hours away, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Now talk about that a little bit because the the record was you were in the middle of recording it when you had to make a change. That is vocals. correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So at that moment when you had when you knew you had to do that i mean what was the mindset of the band i mean what you, they, you've been through so many singers was it like oh here we go again or i mean what were you, you guys know thinking? it it really i don't think i i can speak for myself personally mm -hmm. we didn't have of course we didn't want to have to go through something like that nobody mm -hmm. ever does i uh, we, we were confident in in our our plan and and we knew it was the right move for the band and I, and I think it's it was to a degree mutual I, I think everybody involved in the situation knew that that there were some some disconnects and and I always speak incredibly 
respectfully, and I have I have nothing nothing bad to say about any of the parties involved. It was just a, a clear situation of of uh, one portion of the organization on one page and another portion on another page, and and there's really not much more to say past that. So to answer your question, it was really when the time came to to make a change it was done with a sense of confidence uh and it happened very quickly eric can help me fill in the timeline from our initial uh contact with eric and discussing if he would be interested in doing something like this to to moving forward full steam ahead i mean there really wasn't much time to Eric, you can help me out with the timeline, but yeah. So, I mean, so yeah, sorry. Keep going Rob. No, I mean, you were with, you were in the studio starting to track vocals for some of these songs within, I say within hours of having conversations with us. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. No, 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 not that's at all. I'm, I, I think Rachel reached out to me on Instagram uh, in January and, uh, and then I started recording the album pretty much end of January, beginning of February. Uh, and pretty much all of the vocals were recorded when I met up with you guys in Vegas. And that was end of March. So right. it was just, I, I, I was... <laughs> so when Rachel contacted me, that was five months after uh, my bone marrow transplant that I, right. uh, that I did last year. Uh, so I wasn't really sure where I was mentally or physically at all, sure. but you know, it's just one of those opportunities where you, you get one opportunity like this in life and you go, you either say yes or you say no. And I'm not gonna, you know, when I get old, I don't want to even think about, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say no. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I, I, I can't say no to this opportunity. Um, and and uh, I just knew that I had to do it, but I wasn't really sure how. So I I I contacted my vocal coach. I just you know because when I started this year, I could basically not sing a whole song um, because I was so exhausted physically. Mm -hmm. So I contacted my vocal coach, and you know I started rehearsing the set for Vegas, and also um, also recorded all the vocals, basically all the vocals. We did two songs in Vegas. Um, so it was very, it was a crazy period. Damn. I mean, it's, it was just so intense and it still is. And now that, now that I'm listening to the songs, it, it, this is the first time that I'm actually like listening to them very, I would say objectively, mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, w when you're in the process of recording everything, you're just, you know, you, you sure. listen, listen with different ears. Um, but you know, I, I really like this album. I realized now a couple of yeah. weeks ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, everything I've heard off, it's been fantastic. I think I told you that Rob last time we spoke. You but, did. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. It's just, yeah. it, I can't wait to hear the whole thing. Um, I might, well, ha you. I might get a couple copies coming because I, it was available so long ago. I can't remember if I pre-ordered it back then or how many times okay. I pre-ordered it. <laughs> so I might well, have a few copies be a on the way. Yeah, hopefully you ordered different versions. Uh, so for I the was final just thinking release, that. anyway. Yeah, yeah. the last one, because the last one I ordered was the white one. So I don't okay. remember if I ordered a red one. But okay. We'll see. And we got the, we got the super <laughs> cool splatter, yeah. splatter design. I might yeah. have that one yeah. soon, too. But yeah. Yeah. So, so Eric, um, when you recorded your vocals, that was at, on your own, right? Yeah, first time yeah. ever. So was there... <laughs> First time ever. So was there yeah, any, yeah. any guidance or anything from the band or Nick or anybody? Yeah. There, I mean, there were some, some vocals recorded to, to most of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we, I recorded everything without, we, we, I never met the guys before I started right. recording. We were just going back and forth on, on WhatsApp or sending emails to each other, like with different melodies and, um, and Rachel got back to me and he was like, uh, okay, instead of going, duh, 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 you should go, duh, 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 duh. you know, that's how we recorded this album. basically." Uh, and Nick called me one time or well, a couple of times. Um, but you know, I, I had a few takes where sometimes you, you feel like it's good enough. You don't have to do it to perfection all the time, but Nick sure. 
uh, he's a perfectionist. So he he called me one time and he was like, you know that that high note? I was like, yeah. You should go higher and longer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, uh, yeah. That that was that was this it, this process was pretty. Uh, weird in so many ways the recording process and you know I, I told Rachel that he asked me can you record your vocals at your house and I was like yeah sure but I didn't tell him that it was my first time recording myself <laughs> so I just you know started YouTubing started Googling started calling my buddy Jonah who's producer like okay so what do I need here uh, which microphone should I get and you know and he was right. like okay uh, yeah and I just started investing in the studio and, and started recording started recording and uh so yeah just just and now i actually prefer recording myself i really yeah. enjoy that yeah yeah probably less pressure right with everyone standing around yeah exactly studio. and i can do whatever i want and you know it's just on on my terms basically so sure sure <laughs> now, speaking rob, as a true singer <laughs> yeah. now rob were you guys like a, a kid waiting for christmas morning waiting to hear these songs Absolutely. he was doing Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I, uh, when Eric initially started, I, uh, I think we had the first track back within maybe 36 hours, if I remember correctly with the uh, gangs all here, which was the yeah, first single. Here. Yeah. 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 And it was, it was immediate excitement on our part. It was kind of, it was kind of like the song it's, it, it went from, it went from being the band's tracks to being a song. It, it kind of came alive at that point. Uh, and we were, we were all floored. I mean, it was just, it was just an immediate change of uh, the level of excitement. When we heard the first track just went from, from here to there uh, mm -hmm. immediately. So yeah, to answer your question, then it became, well, when's he going to do the next one? When's he going to do the next one? Has anybody heard from Eric? When's he going to do the right. next one? And meanwhile, the, uh, as Eric said, we had no idea that this was his first time doing this. So, uh, or at least I didn't. And looking back on it, I think that was intentional. I think that was intentional yeah. on Eric's part. Yeah. But when you really look at it, and Joe, you know, you've been in bands and you're, mm -hmm. you're in bands and you make music and you've been through this process. So imagine yourself in a band and you've been working on an album for two years. And now you've got somebody who I think Eric and I said hello to each other once in 2019, but we didn't, we didn't know each other. None of us, we had not all five been in the same room at any point. And now you've got it. You've got a producer in Nashville. You've got a band who's scattered all over the United States a band who hasn't even been in the same room with each other and really had a conversation. I don't think any of us said more than 10 words to each other when we did meet initially and not for any reason, we were just kind of being pulled in our own different directions. And, and that run of shows where we initially met Eric was a very busy, every band has their business to attend to and their schedule to keep. So not for any reason, but we really didn't have any type of, of relationship. So all of a sudden you find yourself in a situation where you've got a singer in Sweden, you've got a producer in Nashville, you've got a band who's been working on these songs. And it was a really, just a really bizarre situation all around. But then when the tracks started coming in, then it later came out that he had never done this before, <laughs> which added another, another layer of, uh, of, I don't know. It's just, it makes the story even more interesting every time I hear it. And every time I really step back and look at the situation, yeah, yeah we kind of did everything uh, I would advise a band not to do, uh, <laughs> if, if that makes any sense. Well, it seems like a, a seamless Sorry. fit, though. I mean, really? Yeah, oh, I mean, I, 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 told, I told you guys when I met you the first time, like, wow, you guys really took a risk here. And Rachel goes, well, you took four risks. Yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> that well, is true. There's some truth to that, but yeah, I mean, it's. I I think, you know, I'm having so I'm having such a great time here, and I think I speak for everyone because I, I we're really having a great time on tour, and it's just it feels like I've been here longer than yeah since March. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, it, it feels absolutely like we've does. Been doing this together for a couple of years at least, so. It's just uh, a match made in heaven, 
if you will. Yeah. Well, I mean, as, um, as a Skid Row fan myself, I mean, it seems that way. It seems like you've been in the band longer, just from what I've seen on YouTube, your live performances. I mean, you, you took ownership of it. You, you own the songs. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all about respect. It's such a great catalog with so many great songs. And it's all about respecting uh, the whole catalog. But I also want to add my my own touch to it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, as as a, as a fan of the band, I, I think I know what the fans want to hear, uh, and I have that fan perspective. Um, but you know, it's it's uh, yeah, so many great songs. I just want to respect the whole catalog, but I also want to you know focus on on the new Skid Row, sure, uh, and and do that to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have we uh, started talking about a script for this story? <laughs> well, it, it's <laughs> certainly been mentioned. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. Sorry. Is it? Are you breaking up? Are we breaking up? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. You must have got the bad hotel room with the interface. Yeah, I know. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got to break you in, right? I'm the That's new right. guy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so Hollywood script. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying, yeah, I, yeah. have we started on that yet? <laughs> I think we have yeah, actually. You know, actually, to be honest, I bet some some producers have actually contacted me and they, mm. they're talking about a documentary or or a movie or. No, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah. uh, it's just I this this story is something that people find pretty inspiring um mm -hmm. and and it's you, you know when you add everything if you look at that actually I, I told the guys that when i did my first show in vegas i was on stage and when i was kind of like interacting with the audience and it was just when we started playing 18 alive and the intro and uh, dude dun, 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 and i go something like you know what it feels like to be up here with your favorite band of all time singing the song that started your career because i did 18 right. alive when i auditioned for idol back in 2009 in sweden and uh, and someone commented on youtube uh something like did that guy just quote the mark Wahlberg from the <laughs> rock star movie because it's just you know i didn't really think about it about it but it pretty much i pretty much said the same something like that and it's like this whole story is just like that movie but then when you add the my illness last year uh i, I i'm gonna say it actually gets even more hollywood it gets mm, even better yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it's quite uh, a uh, yeah the last couple of years of your life has been a that's a script in and of itself mm -hmm. uh yeah and then uh yeah i i do uh yeah i think at some point in some capacity the uh the documentation the last the last couple of years uh both from a band perspective and from as i said eric's story alone is such mm -hmm. a great great story and inspirational story uh you know if i were in charge we'd already be working <laughs> on it uh, or they would already be working on it but uh but we'll see. I think at yeah. some point we yeah. will do some kind of of uh, behind the scenes of what was really the process for all of us. Uh, it, it's interesting. It's definitely yeah. It's definitely yeah. an interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell me about um, Nick. How how big of a part was how important was he to this album? Uh, well, I can tell you from a band perspective. Uh, incredibly important uh mm. so obviously nick's nick's resume it, and his reputation it speaks for itself and mm. and he's i mean he's got a a tremendous tremendous catalog uh and the list of bands that he's worked with is just it's amazing and there's no question about it so for a band like us to go in and work with somebody like that we knew immediately that that's this is an opportunity this is an opportunity for us to go in and really do something special that said although a couple of us had met nick and and knew nick to a degree until you actually work with him you don't realize what what an amazing uh 
personality he has in it. He's just, he's a presence. He's a, he's a force. He's a creative force. His level of enthusiasm when you're in there working, even on days when it's harder than some of the other days, if he's really, really pushing to get something out of you or we're breaking down songs, a lot of these songs had either been demoed or even recorded at one point. And a lot of these songs, we went right back to, I say, we, we tore them down to the studs and started almost from scratch on some of these and completely rewrote them or reworked them. And he's a, he's, he's not afraid to tell you exactly, exactly. And this is what you want from a producer. You want to know, don't pull any punches, just let me sure. know. And, he, and he's great. But with that, he's just so inspiring and you almost, it's almost like this person in the room that you just, you want to make him proud. He's our guy. Yeah. And, and you see how enthusiastic he can be about things. You see the way he responds when, when something great is happening in the room. He was out there. There was the four of us, uh, the band, when we would be in the room, uh, just experimenting or rehearsing or, or working on these songs, he was out there with us. It wasn't like he would, he would kind of leave us to do our thing. He was every bit as much in the room and he was getting excited and throwing horns when you do something great, something he loved. He wasn't afraid to give you the thumbs down when, when he wasn't feeling it. Uh, and to be honest with you, that was great. It was really good yeah. for us as a band to have somebody that we trusted and somebody that we really, really respected to, to make some decisions for us and decisions that maybe as a band, you kind of, you lose the ability to, to, to objectively listen sometimes. Uh, so for us, that was, I mean, that was huge. And again, his personality, he just, he just brings something out of, of you as a musician that I've never experienced before. Wow. Okay. How many songs, there's 10 songs on the record, right? Right. How many were recorded? Gosh. Oh, well, over the last couple of years, I've lost track, but so over the last bit. couple of years, quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Quite okay. a bit. So I, uh, I'm going to say 15 or 16, mm -hmm. but I've kind of, kind of lost, lost count over the last couple of years. I would say 15 or 16, probably in total. And this is going back to sessions and, and things that we did prior to working with Nick. Mm -hmm. uh, so when, from when we started working on the album to when it was completed, uh, and that doesn't account for, I, I, I know Rachel and Snake have ideas and, and things that are been cataloged and maybe demoed to an extent. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are things that were discussed and, and considered that didn't even really get to the point where we were working on them as a band. Uh, but in terms of how many songs were recorded, I would say 15 to 16. Okay. And did you, how many did you sing, Eric? Just the 10 or did you sing more? No, just the 10. Okay. Yeah. So I did eight at my house and we did two in Vegas uh, when we opened for, uh, for Scorpions. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. So, when you opened for the Scorpions, that you only were with the guys for a couple of days, right? When that happened, we met. We, yeah, we met. We met that same week. So <laughs> I flew in on a Tuesday. We rehearsed Wednesday and Thursday, right, Rob? And we had That's a day right. off on the Friday, and then we played our first show together on the Saturday. Correct. Wow. wow. That that was our yeah that that was our first show and the first time we met each other basically yeah because i so so i opened with um, my former band heat opened for skid row in mm -hmm. the uk in 2019 but like rob said i'm not I, I i'm not really sure if we even said hello to each other it was just like maybe we waved or something i don't know right. i don't even remember <laughs> yeah right. but you know when, when you're when you're the opening act you kind of you kind of want to do your thing and then get out and don't you know you don't want to bother the main act right. so that's what we did so we did our we did our show and we kind of like left the venue so i'm mm -hmm. not really sure how much do you remember seeing me rob uh, well i you know it seems like so long ago now i uh, i don't i mean we would see each other around the venue but again everybody's on different schedules and everybody travels yeah. differently and and i uh, to your credit, I mean, you were a band that was focused. You knew you knew what needed to be done, and you were focused on doing that. And from our end, same thing. We we knew what our schedule looked like, and and everybody would kind of keep their heads down and and do 
do uh, do what they needed to do. Wait, uh, so what you're anyway. saying here is that you didn't do that tour to hang out with me. I think no. that's what he's no. saying. Oh, no. okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I okay. was trying to be delicate about it, but no. <laughs> that was, in fact, I wanted to cancel that tour because priorities. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it was really, yeah, it was an interesting uh, situation, but I can say, and I, and I say this, uh, and this is, this is the absolute truth from our dressing room. We were aware of Eric and mm. Eric has some, some legendary and, and very highly regarded performances and certainly of 18 in life and, and some of his performances that are, that are on YouTube and, and online throughout his career. And to say that we were well aware of those is an understatement. We, we knew, uh, mm -hmm. and we would, whether we were warming up in the dressing room or we're, whether we were coming and going from the venue, I can tell you every night when he was on stage with Eric, it was all of us would comment at some point or another throughout the course of their set that, man, this guy's, this guy's great. They sound great. So we were definitely, we were definitely aware. Mm -hmm. So Eric, on that first night in Vegas, when Rob counts in slave to the grind, I'm assuming that's what you <laughs> opened with, right? That yep. is right. Yes. What, what yep. was like in your head before you ran out onto that stage being such a fan of Skid Row? You said, man, yeah, this drummer's know, good. <laughs> yeah, this drummer is so fucking sexy. What no. a counter. Uh, <laughs> no. So, uh, sorry, Rob. That wasn't really what I was thinking about. I understand. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, but, you know, I, like I said, I was just trying to figure out where I was physically. I haven't, I, you know, at the time, it was probably two or three years since I toured or even was on stage and performed. Um, so if you, if you, even if you don't include the, my, my illness, it would still be pretty, uh, pretty hard to get back on stage. You know, it's, it's, sure. yeah, you, you get, you need the physicality uh, basically. So, um, and also being the new lead singer of the band, I, the good thing is that I get pretty ignorant when, when it comes to like big events like this or big shows. Um, I, I, I'm more of an introvert. Um, so I, I focus, I just focus song by song, basically. So the only thing that existed was Slave to the Grind, the first, the first song that we did. Okay, next song. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. remember, but The Threat. And okay, that's the only song that exists right now. And I was just trying to kind of like pace myself and, and you know, manage the whole set. Um, and I, it, it, was it scary? Yes. Um, it, but I was so convinced that, you know, somehow if you look like if you look at the whole story, someone gave me a second chance, you know, mm -hmm. and and I was not going to you know, I was I, I was going for it and I, I wanted it all. And I, you know, I was so glad to be back on stage and told myself at the hospital, if I make it out of here alive, I will sing for the rest of my life. And here I was in Skid Row um and first first show and you know i i knew the songs obviously but it's just about getting to know each other on and off stage um but the first show felt like i mean it didn't feel like the first show mm -hmm. if you know what i mean it felt it, like it really didn't yeah it it and i don't mean to 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 interrupt there it was it really felt familiar and it felt like as eric said earlier not just on a personal level, but, but that first show, it just felt right. It, it felt right. And, you know, for us going into those shows, it was a little bit different set length than we were used to at that time. And, and there were a couple of, of variables and things that, that made that situation a, a little, uh, I say different, but it was unique. It was a unique situation for a couple of reasons. And it was, I think that we were all, uh, adjusting to to our own individual things but it it just felt right the five of us it, it felt like it gelled pretty quick uh, when i say pretty quickly i mean immediately and i don't mm. know eric if you if you felt the same way it, it just felt yeah, right 
Absolutely. And I, I, it was it wasn't until after the show that I realized, like, OK, this is actually people are actually talking about this. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I I started realizing, OK, so I'm in Skid Row now and people will have an opinion about it. And but when I did, you know, just when I was about to enter the stage, the only thing that was on my mind was, OK, slave to the grind. This is the only song that exists right now. I'm going to pace myself. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Um, and then I realized, oh, there's a lot of people commenting <laughs> and, <laughs> you know. And Rob is such uh, an amazing drummer, you realized. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, you actually, yeah. you actually are. You, I've, I've told you so many times after the show, it's like, you're so solid. And I, I don't think I, I've ever heard you fuck up. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's that's nice. Of you all the say. 45 shows we've done together. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, all of the, I mean, the response from what I've seen seemed to be all pretty much positive. So that's got to be a great feeling to see that. Absolutely. I mean, I, and even if, you know, there's, there's, there's so many different types of fans. Uh, I've, I've realized that because, you know, when we did the show in, in California, Rob, and, the, the people came up to me after the show and they were like, Sebastian, you still got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 That happened. Yeah. Oh, and, and then you have the fans who, who still think that Sebastian is in the band. And then you have the fans to know the whole story. And so there, you know, uh, but I, I feel like I, I also understand the fan perspective of wanting uh, the original lineup. I understand that. Because you know I'm I'm a Bon Scott guy myself, mm. um, but uh, I I I I I think that people are really excited about this new album. About and and I, I feel like even the people who are uh, who want the original lineup are actually uh, starting to approve of, of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of this, yeah. Do you agree, Rob? I, I certainly do. I. And, and I find, or I have found recently, I think, as Eric said, we're all fans and, and it could be music or it could be various other forms of art, but, but from a fan perspective, I get it. And there are certain bands that I'm a huge fan of, and maybe I have an attachment to one era of their career over another. I, uh, to, to a large degree, I feel like as that, that relates to us people who might really be attached to and fixated on a particular era they may still be nostalgic for that and they they may still be holding out hope that they will one day see that again but they're acknowledging that that what we've got going on right now is is pretty special and mm -hmm. and they're much nicer about it i'm just going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> they're being much nicer about it uh, which is great. At the end of the day, you're never going to please everybody. And, and again, we both Eric and I have said it, and I'm sure Joe, you feel the same way from a fan standpoint, I even understand where they're coming from. And if you want to have a, a calm, rational discussion about it, that's what, that's what makes this thing called art fun is you can discuss your opinions and your sure. feelings and different, different perspectives. I, uh, but yeah, the, the response has just been, um, I have to say it's been beyond anything that I ever, ever could have asked for. Uh, I'm guilty of myself personally. Uh, I'm guilty of, I think it's, it's maybe a little bit of my personality, my insecurities, or maybe it's self-preservation. I tend to tune so much of that stuff out. I uh, sometimes maybe I, 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 I should allow myself to be a little bit more excited about those types of things. Uh, and right now it's hard not to be. And that's mm. a really, really special thing for me to be able to say that I can, I can just, I can just see this warm welcoming response from, from a lot of people that, that maybe wouldn't have felt the same way, mm -hmm. uh, you know, given different circumstances. Uh, and that's really nice to see. And I'm glad that, that as a band, we're really just, just open to it and grateful for it. And, and, uh, that's really all I can say about that. Eric, I don't know sure. if that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, when I joined this band, I realized that 
it's such a privilege to have people so interested in the band, talking about the band, discussing everything. You know, a lot of bands would kill for that. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, that's a privilege. And um, so, so there, there, that's also a perspective. Like you have all these people talking about Skid Row and they, you know, just they like that singer or they like that song or that era. And that's, that's just incredible, you know, having people so, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so excited about it or, you know, yeah. hating it or <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we, well, we i'm, I'm excited all. about it. a lot of people are it's very highly anticipated record i believe um and it's uh it's out now actually yeah yeah <laughs> yep right <laughs> it is yeah. it's actually happening it's happening yeah. finally here yeah so That's okay right. so you got some dates some u.s dates left and then you're heading overseas we have two uh, two shows left in the U.S. Uh, Friday the fourteenth, which is coincidentally release day, mm -hmm. uh, and that was just that was just a, a coincidence. Really, we didn't plan to do, or we didn't start planning to do an album release show or or mm -hmm. an event of any kind. Uh, it just happened to work out that way. Uh, another show on Saturday the fifteenth. And the following day, October 16th, we will head over to the UK uh, for a run of shows in the UK and Europe. And we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back just before Thanksgiving. So this is this is a nice little run for us. Nice. Yeah, And, and then Australia uh, early December to finish the year. And that'll be that'll be it for the year. Australia. What, what is it? What season is it in Australia at that time? Well, summer. they'll be going into. Some? Yeah, they'll be going in the summer yeah. when we go down there, which would be nice. Okay. Nice in Australia in the summer? It's extremely hot. <laughs> oh, is it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's yeah. going to be crazy. But, uh, yeah. And then, uh, Rob, you were able to hook the Myrtle Beach dates up or no? I'm still working last... on it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I want to be able to give you the uh, the grand experience I promised. So I'm, st okay. I'm still working on it. Still working on it. We're just kidding. Yeah, here. we're, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've heard some... Uh, some rumors bits and pieces of uh next year is going to be very 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 busy for us as band uh yeah so a, a yeah. lot of dates um coming our way coming your way so well i'm gonna try and get out to one of them i, I i'm sure you're not gonna come here but it, you'll probably be in charlotte i would guess if you do this area so i'll, I'll get to a show close by if i can okay okay sounds good i'll drag you out yeah yeah i'll get there yeah all right, guys. Well, very exciting times. Um, congratulations on the release. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right, fellas. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for having us.